What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here. We're gonna take a look at a laptop. Um, it's kind of funny because laptops are one of those things that I personally am a huge fan of. I've got a bunch of them now. Uh, we did a video recently too where we talked about why we check out all these different things. As somebody who used to be a traveling professional and still travels a lot for work, I appreciate a very powerful and very lightweight and portable laptop. So that's why today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Electronics. Funny name, yeah I know, it is an electronic. But this one's spelled funny. There's nothing funny about this. We're gonna talk about it today. Today's video is sponsored by Bitdefender, the protection suite trusted by the experts. Rated as the best cybersecurity in the world according to independent tests from labs like AV Comparative and AV Test, Bitdefender includes key features for both average users and experts alike. Features like multi-layer ransomware protection, network threat prevention, anti-tracking extensions to keep your browser activity private, and parental controls giving parents the tools necessary to control online experiences for kids by filtering out inappropriate sites and apps. Bitdefender is available on all major platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android, meaning no matter what device you're using, you're protected with Bitdefender. Bitdefender is currently giving away six months of free protection to new users in the US and Canada. So start protecting your devices by clicking on the sponsor link in the description below. So we're gonna start with the packaging here for a second. It is open, I've already kind of updated the laptop. There are some updates that need to be done. This is the Mag 15. I'm gonna be honest here, if I were in a store, and electronics, I'm, I'm sorry for the brutal honesty here, but if I, were, if I were walking down the aisle, I would probably ignore your brand just based on the packaging alone. This needs some work, it really does. I understand most people take the box and just do that with it. But look, it needs some work. This is a 15.4 inch magnesium alloy, 15, yeah, 15.4 inch screen mag, with a magnesium alloy chassis weighing at only four pounds. That's exactly this much in kilograms. But this chassis was actually made in collaboration with Intel. Intel was very involved in the design of it. Now, obviously electronics is the vendor or the SI, the system integrator. In fact, I'll put a link to the Amazon sale down in the description below, but there are uh, quite a few accessories you get with this right now for the holiday sale. Let me go get them. So you get this neoprene mouse pad with it um, as part of the sale. It's got an anti-slip on the bottom. Full-size HDMI cable, because it does actually have a full-size HDMI port on the back, as well as a um, light, or lightning bolt, a thunderbolt, lightning bolt, thunderbolt port on the back. Full-size ethernet, which is kind of nice because a lot of laptop companies have started dropping this, which I hate because I take wired connection anywhere I can. So Wi-Fi as well as wired, obviously, and then power port in the back. But you get a... Uh, eSports gaming mouse, so it's an RGB mouse, and headset. Now they do also have an RGB mouse pad, as well as a uh, full-size mechanical gaming keyboard. Now we're not taking a look at these today because they're not included with the bundle deal, but right now, what I'm showing you is available on Amazon with all this stuff that comes with it. So I'll put that link down below. But obviously, the, none of that matters if the laptop itself is no good. So it has got an Intel i7-9750H, the same CPU that's been around for a while now and is getting ready to be end of life because of the 10th gen stuff that's kind of trickling its way to the market. So you'll probably see the same laptop updated in the near future with uh, new CPUs and stuff, which would make this one an ideal bargain if it goes on sale because I would gladly take a previous gen at a cheaper cost if it goes on sale than the newest gen because of the 2% faster it may potentially be. Extremely durable. There's no flex or creak in it. It's very light as you can see, but you know what's not light? The hardware inside. Six cores, 12 threads. Um, this particular version has a, an NVIDIA 2070 Max-Q GPU in it, making it very capable for mobile gaming, as well as, um, Phil, we, we have this video idea we wanna do. In fact, let me grab the, the backpack. So I got this cheap, rigid backpack off of Amazon because it would allow me to be able to cut like holes and actually mount fans and stuff to it where we're gonna make our own backpack VR gaming rig. Yes, I know they sell gaming rig like backpack PCs, but they're really heavy and stuff. So the idea with this being a four pound PC that can handle all of the processing power and the pushing of the FPS that you need, what 72 FPS is what you need for the Quest. And then the Rift S is 80 FPS is like the standard, standard when you wanna keep the FPS locked. Um, I think an, or HTC Vive, it was like 90. So it's got plenty of horsepower for that. This is a video you'll see in the future where we just kind of see if we can't homebrew our own backpack battery, blah, 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 to make it all work. Moving on here though, this um, also has a D-brand skin on it, which features the Electronics logo, which to me, like I know it's supposed to be a shield, but it, I, all I see is a Stormtrooper. I keep seeing a Stormtrooper there. 
And ever since I saw that, like, feels like, oh no, you ruined it, because now all I see is a stormtrooper. <laughs> I can't so, unsee it. You can't unsee it. <laughs> but this wrap here is the, the simulated leather, which is really nice, so it'll protect this from scratches and stuff. So this comes pre-applied. Really good job at applying it too, by the way. It's very squared up to the edges. But let's go and take a walk around the side. And one of the reasons that make this the perfect mobile solution for like what we do, it's got an SD card reader, which a lot of laptop companies are now dropping. Please don't follow Apple. They're not worth following. PC brands, you don't need to drop all the ports. You don't need to drop USBs. You don't need to drop SD card readers. Please, we're better than that. You don't like, you don't like living in Dongletown? I could live in Dongletown if I want because it's got the uh, <laughs> USB-C and uh, you know, li the, the, lightning the, the lightning thunderbolt, the lightning bolt. <laughs> Two US, uh, USB 3.0 full size. Um, we got another one on this side, full size three and a half uh, millimeter headphone and microphone jack. Kensington lock, but we're never gonna be putting this on display anywhere, so who cares? One of the things that I care about with laptops, quite honestly, is this expandability. And that being things like adding more storage, adding more um, RAM and stuff like that. Now this particular configuration comes with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 SODIMM memory. This can obviously be configured all the way up to 64 gigabytes for RAM, which is kind of insane um, for a mobile solution, but if you're doing a lot of heavy workloads and stuff, then you can get that. And then it uh, starts at a 1660 Ti, a mobile 1660 Ti um, for your particular graphic starting point. So there's only two, 1660 Ti and a 2070. So there's a bit of a price jump when you do that, but with that um, comes obviously a bit of a performance jump. I'm gonna start with the, uh, the keyboard. I have a Razer Blade Pro, which has pretty much identical specs to this. I also have a Razer Blade Non-Pro, which is pretty, pretty much the identical specs to the Razer Blade Pro, which is a whole nother conversation about how non-Pro-y the Pro is this time around with Razer. But let me tell you what I can't get past with that. The keyboard. I hate, absolutely, positively, without a doubt, hate the keyboard that comes on the Razer Blade. I can't type on it. It's got a very short throw, it's flat keycap, which these are flat also. I can type on flat, but I need a, a bit of a key throw. And the Razer Blade, the chiclet keys, just do not have that. Uh, can you see what it is that I am typing? I would not have been able to do that on a Razer. I'd have been like, can you see what it is that I'm typing? That's what it would be like on a Razer. <laughs> Um, it's just got a real satisfying sound to it. You know when you click the key. This is what I, I suspect sex in a keyboard would sound like. So I can type on it, good enough. Now it's no worse than me typing on any full-size keyboard. Any mistakes you see is me, not the keyboard. In terms of specs of the monitor, this is a 15.4 inch IPS 144 uh, hertz refresh rate monitor. I don't know what the response time is on it, but I can tell you right now it's fast because I get no ghosting. The off-axis viewing angles on this are amazing with in terms of color shift because obviously IPS. So it's giving you color accuracy for like Photoshop, Premiere, as well as gaming. They also didn't go with the stupid 4K display at 15.4 inch, which is ridiculous. No brand should be running a 4K panel at 15 inches. I'm sorry. 1080p looks like 4K in terms of pixel density at this size. So we're gonna run some 3D Mark on this so it kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea of the performance. Like I said, it's nothing new in terms of hardware. It's the same 2070 Max-Q that's been out for a while, the same 9750H. But what's cool is, is they give you kind of a one-touch button here to make it easy to switch between the modes. So let's say you're out traveling, you're on battery, and you just push this little button up here in the corner. Now we're in balanced mode. Push it again, it's in battery saver, so yeah, there's no lights on. If I push it again, we're in performance mode. So that switches the power profile that's built into Windows. Rather than having to go into like settings and power and switch it yourself or clicking the battery, you can just do it right from this button. One of the things that also is advertised about electronics laptops here, it is 100% bloatware free. This is the same Windows install as if you took an install media and installed a bare bones Windows system with no RGB controllers, no fan stuff, no ASUS stuff, none of that. So one of the things I'm gonna be checking for here, obviously, is how hot it gets. Um, is it too hot to the touch? Are we, are, are we getting too hot where the palm rests are? So the time spy demo is still going. It's still pretty smooth, but what I wanna, what I wanna point out, and you can't see this because I don't have my thermal imaging camera, it's cool to the touch right here. In fact, it's cooler on the left than it is on the right, which is funny because that's typically where your left hand's gonna be, right hand either here, mouse, whatever. We've got plenty of heat exhausting out the side. We've got vents here at the base of the monitor. 
All right, so we have a 7,417 total score, graphics score of 7552 and 6737 on the CPU. It's past a 4K gaming PC, whatever that actually technically means. And then this score, 7417, so not bad, not bad at all. All right, we'll do Port Royal now, which is actually a fairly difficult test to run because it is DXR or RTX, whatever you wanna call it. Um, technically it's DXR, RTX is just what NVIDIA calls their cards that can do DXR. So we got a 4,519. I have no idea if that's any good or not, to be honest. We've barely run this test because we can't compare it with AMD cards because AMD doesn't do DXR yet. A um, Couple things that we learned too here while we were going. So in terms of trackpad, you know, sometimes if you're using a mouse, you wanna turn off the trackpad and you're typing and your palms hit it and it's like, oh man, you can actually, there's a little white light right here in the, in the corner, it's off right now. If you double tap it, that turns it off. So when the trackpad light is on, that means it's disabled, as you can see. So that's kind of nice, and you can quickly turn it on and off. There's a lot of really neat little things with this laptop that's making it um, really kind of a pleasure to use. Uh, there is a control center app. So we'll start here with lighting effects. Um, keyboard backlights, so you can turn the keyboard on and off. LED light bar, that's the one in the front. I just turned that off, Let's see? Boop, boop. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Or you can have two different modes too. When it's on battery, have it off so you're not using more power plugged in. So you can control your fan speed and stuff right here. We've got system power mode, gaming plus electro boost, fan mode performance. Hey, so we were set to gaming right there. Let's see if I go to this gaming boost mode, if I get a bigger score or a higher score, what do you say? And our score came up about 30 points, so 45, 95. And that's probably honestly just the fact that it can hold the boost clock a little longer with the fan at max speed. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, leaving everything in performance mode. System monitor, so we can see what our temperatures. This is actually pretty, pretty nice control center, and it, it seems like it's fairly lightweight. Now, all puns aside, the iFixit kit really does make a really good uh, gift for anyone that likes to take things apart, any nerds or whatever. It's just good to have. So, they didn't pay me to say this. It's not a sponsor or anything like that. I'm just telling you right now, the iFixit kit. If you're looking for someone, a gift for someone for the $50 range or whatever, because they've got all kinds of different sizes of these kits. Highly consider that for someone that likes to, uh, you know, work on tech, computers, phones, whatever. So it's just, it's just got every bit you could possibly need. We're gonna go ahead and take this apart. It looks like I just had to take the perimeter screws out and maybe these middle ones. The manual actually tells us, but you know how I am with manuals. Um, that's one of the nice things about this particular brand too, is they give you a teardown guide. Like a, the manual actually tears you, tells you how to tear it down. Got it. Is it plastic? No, it's metal, dude. We were just talking about how magnesium feels like plastic on the outside with the way they have this texture, but that is magnesium. So as you can see, here's our SSD right here. We have room to add another one. Here is our SODIM. We are using Crucial. But you only have two SODIM slots right here. So you know, if you want to upgrade this to uh, more capacity from 16 to 32, you have to replace them with two 16 gigabyte uh, SODIMs. But yeah, so you can see the fans pull the air in through the opening right there. And then it exhausts them out the sides here and here. So as you can see, the fans turn this way. And so the air is like just kind of brushing the, the fan, the blades are brushing the air out to the outsides. So they're coming out the back and the sides. So you obviously have heat pipes connecting the GPU and the CPU. This battery is at 8,000 milliamp. Oh, 93.48 watt hours. Ooh, nice. That's a big battery. It's the biggest battery you could take on a plane. So the very last test I'm gonna perform here, I just did. It's the hinge test. Can I open the laptop without the computer folding backwards? So that's how much you flex you have in the, the hinge right there. So it doesn't lay flat. You need to keep that in mind. But the hinge, as you can see, you flip it around, it's gonna wiggle, but it's not like falling and flopping all over its place. So it's actually a pretty good hinge resistance right there. So if you are looking for a laptop that's lightweight, but powerful, small footprint, IPS screen, plenty of hardware, plenty of upgradability, and at a fairly reasonable price, depending on the specs that you get, you know, you have to determine what price is worth to you, then check the description below. I'll put a link to their website. Like I said, they sent this over for us to take a look at. Um, I'm constantly looking at laptops, trying to find the perfect one. And I wanna say that this is pretty high up there on my list. Um, it's gonna be a gaming laptop though. I'm gonna recommend going with as much storage as you can get or just getting their base storage spec and then putting in like a two terabyte SSD or something and just spending the three or 400 bucks it's gonna to cost to get a good NVMe two terabyte SSD because with the size of games today, 
Like I went to ba download Battlefield 3, or no, not 3, but Battlefield 5 on this, and it was 84 gigabytes. If you want to download Red Dead Redemption 2, it's 112 gigabytes. So it's one of those things where a 512 on this, the fact that there's only 444 left after Windows partitioning, you could put a couple of games on this and then you're done. So that's really the only drawback is the size of the storage. And that's because a lot of laptop brands have now moved over to M.2 because of its compact size. But with it means much smaller capacities than when they were full size SATA drive sitting in here. So that's probably the only drawback to this. But with that said, you guys sign off in the comments below. The fact that it's bloatware free, super simplistic, no stupid red and gold everywhere, or, you know, the stupid gaudy designs that a lot of these brands come up with. Um, I am pretty pleased with what I see here. So thanks for watching guys. Tell us what you think about electronics. We'll put a link to the brand down below as well as a link to the iFixit thing I showed you a second ago because it does make a great stocking stuffer. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.